Good day and welcome to Guide to the Reporting Galaxy. This is our first webinar in, well, since our little summer break, isn't it, Chuck? It's been a while, yeah. We've given people a little bit of a rest, but we're ready to get back into the speed of things. And one of the things we always are, are proud of, we work very hard at, is to help you get your data out of Student Manager. And so we're going to review the reporting galaxy in terms of the myriad ways we can get you the data. So we're going to kind of go back to the beginning. I know we've got a mixed group here. A lot of, um, I should say old timers, a lot of seasoned veterans. And then we've got some that are new. So we're going to cover a little bit about storage, talk about the different reporting areas where we can get you help. I uh, want to make sure we cover the queries versus report. We'll walk through a bit more detail on the report setup and then certainly get into questions. So, um, and again, <clears throat> this is an overview. We're not going to be modifying any reports today, um, but that this is to give you a good overview of what the tools are and make sure that you know how to get to them. So, <clears throat> here we go. Uh, data storage, well, the three, I always talk about the, the, the three-legged stool of a, of, a, of a database, and that is the people, the students, the names, the classes that you offer, and then the registration, which is the record of the student enrolled in a class. And again, uh, there are quick reports, predefined reports, and user-defined reports for obviously all of these areas. So. That uh, trilogy is also referenced on the quick launch board. And Lori, Lori just wanted to show this fancy bar off. But this is, again, a new interface that allows you to get to the lookup tools, lookup name, lookup course, lookup a registration uh, that we announced here just about a month and a half ago. Uh, so if you haven't got that particular fancy tool, you need to get the new upgrade. Um, of most of your bread and butter reports, and again, we're talking about quick reports now, are located on the screen itself. So the blue name screen, there's a quick report. On the yellow, uh, this is faculty screen, I think, quick reports. On the course screen, there's a quick report. On the registration screen, it is the receipt report that gives you, in essence, a quick report about the record that you're on. So, and of course, I say, of course, if you're new, but in the main reporting area, you've got, again, we've always, we talk about the 84 reporting areas, and within each reporting area, you've got user-defined and predefined reports. So here they are, quick reports, which are the ones tied to the data screen. They don't have a query. You just click it, and it gives you that course, that name, that's, that registration on the report. Predefined, you use with queries. Uh, these are reports that are the standard report, or I shouldn't say, there's nothing standard. It is the report that you use most often within an area. We'll talk about that when we get to the screen. But again, the predefined report for your program should be that report, whether it's in rosters, course CEUs, whether it's in mailing labels. The report that you run most of the time ought to be the predefined report <clears throat> so that your users don't have to click additional and go find the report from the dropdown. User defined, again, can be customized. And again, all of these can be customized, quick, predefined, user defined. And you can use with queries. So again, the idea is think of this as a starting quarterback report. This is your substitute quarterback that you bring in for special occasions, or if there's something that you want to do a little different that, that the starting quarterback does. So we, we're going to talk about more about football options a little later. OK, where do you go for general reporting help? Um, well, let me, let me get to that area. So general reporting help. I'm going to now run to the, the website. For reporting help, we've got lots of options. There is the online help guide from the student manager help guide or from your student manager from your student manager screen. You can get to the help and the fancy new button that we've got here. 
in the help guide, in the help guide under student manager topics is a whole section on reporting. So lots of areas in there on reporting. Uh, in addition to the elements on the um, the elements in the help guide, we've got a huge section under webinar archive. So there is a whole section under reporting that talks about the different areas of reporting, and we'll talk about queries. Queries are also part of the report process, and I want to make sure. Yeah, they're under the queries as well. Uh, the Function Academy queries <clears throat> that are all part of the help guide. OK, so uh, reports about reports. And this is something that if you haven't, if you're new to Manager or if you don't know about these reports, we're going to actually show them to you. Because what they provide you, come back to me. What they provide you are ways to look at what the reports are in your system. Reports by area, by frequency, are all reports with memo. We're going to take a break and show those to you. So we're going to go to reports, accounting, one line, one reg, deadbeat. Now again, these, these reports have nothing to do with deadbeat, but that's where we store them. So under additional reports, You've got reports by area frequency. Lori, you am I catching up? Or are you staying with me uh, appointment-wise? Okay. Yeah, you're reports good. by area frequency, reports by frequency, and then this new all reports with memo. And new is relative because it's actually been around since 2005. So we're going to run that. We're going to run uh, the one. We're going to run the all new all reports with memo. We'll click additional reports. We go through. In this report, we really don't care what the query is. It's, it's a special purpose report. Pick a query that you know there is some information that would give you data. So I'm going to do course begins with 1.3. We don't worry about the money in this case. And we're going to go to new all reports with memo. And we run into Laura, Cheryl and I were working with the demo. And I'm going to have to start it and start over again. Desktop demo. I had a, I had a blown attendance report. And I don't think I've cleaned it up yet. So let's see if we can get it to work now. Reporting. Get out of this chuck. H. Okay, I want to get rid of these two. All right, let's try this again. Additional reports. Course number begins with no and new. All right, now we're good. Okay. So you're, we're finally at this report. But if you have not run this for your data, please do that. This will tell you by reporting area, there's attendance reporting, attendance roster, um, accounting cash box. It'll tell you how many reports you have in the area, when they were last run, when they were last modified, who the user was that modified it and gives you a description of all these different reports. So again, it's a good resource for you as you're trying to become familiar with the reports area. And then, of course, the frequency, area frequency, you can go back and run those as well. All right, moving on. Finding the right report. This is one of the biggest challenges a lot of times people are trying to find. Well, I need a report that gives me payment information and class information, or payment information and registration information. There's two ways to do that. One is if you're looking for a report. Now, uh, actually, I'm going to back up. If you are looking for a report where you know you've printed the report before and you're trying to find it because you, you can't remember of all of the reports, where did this report go? 
Well, there is an option under the help guide where you can go to tools, reports, search reports for keyword. And if I wanted to find the word statistics, look for the word statistic in a report. And again, this is the reset on this. Fighting my report system, Lori. Uh, you can. When that happens. <laughs> yeah, well, you can search for a keyword, and it will tell you all the reports that have that keyword. I'm going to tab out, try one more time to get this to behave for me. Desktop, student manager demo. Choose OK. I actually may want to, if this doesn't work, I'm going to jump to another demo. Search reports for keyword statistics, and it's OK. I'm going to go back, get to another demo. Cancel this. I can get. All right, stay with me, kids. This is the live live programs in action. 72A9, C-H-U-C-K. All right, now we're in the system. Cancel, no. OK, let's go to this search reports for keyword statistic. All right, so now it's telling us here are some reports that have the word statistic in. It gives you the area statistics course, and it gives you the description of the report. And then when I hit Escape to leave the master course view, it gives us user-defined reports. Again, it tells us the area that it's in, accounting or registrations, one line, one reg. Here's the name of the report, and uh, tells us, again, where these other reports are. So again, that's how you can locate a report if you're looking for a specific report. Now, I started to talk about if you were just saying, hey, I'm new, and I want to find a report that gives me certain information, names and courses, in the help guide. So in the student manager help guide, there is a guide to report selection. Um, and it says here, Report Area Guide, under Reporting, Report Area Guide. And in it, it tells us within each of the reporting areas what the fields, what the areas are that we're going to find in that report. So, cash box, we can get information on names, classes, or courses, course UDS, and payments. Under daily income, it shows you these. So this is basically a very good uh, overview or kind of an index to the reports where you can see by area, CE reporting, course, course user defined records, location, where you can see what are the, the data areas that you can get data out of when you're going to a report area. All right, Lori, I'm going to take a breath here now and see if any questions or if I've got people confused or are they staying with me? They seem to be staying with you, but we have a couple people requesting the ability to print that list from the search reports by keyword. Uh, I don't have a way to print that. What I would recommend is that you do a screen dump of that. Um, send, you know, the idea that, yeah, I hear what you're saying. There is no way to do that currently. Um, you can do a screen capture and print. Um, but um, yeah, right now, we don't have the ability to do that. Uh, so I would, I, generally, what you would do is you, you're looking for a specific report. You would note which area that it's from, and then just go to that area and run the report was, I guess, our thought behind that. Very Other good. comments? That's about it for now. OK, so we've got the help guide on the topics of reporting, which we've reviewed for you. Um, report area guide, again, uh, we showed you the live section of that. And again, in the report system, if you're a new user, remember, you get three free custom reports when you buy Student Manager. 
And then uh, after that, we can build custom reports for you if you want us to do the building for you uh, if you don't want to learn uh, to do it yourself. Again, uh, asking questions to the tech about where is the best report, that is part of your, your tech support. So if you're saying, I need a report that does this, 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 and this, and you've kind of looked through the guide and still aren't sure, call your tech or email your tech with your report area question, and they would be happy to send you uh, suggestions as to where to start. And again, custom reports, we generally build, we bill out reports at $150 an hour. We actually can do most reports within an hour, hour and a half. Uh, I think there's a minimum $75 charge. But again, if you would like us to build your reports for you, uh, we're able to do that. Again, uh, advance notice would be helpful uh, because it, we don't always, uh, you know, our guys are pretty busy, guys and gals are busy, and can't immediately jump on a special report if you need it by 2 o'clock this afternoon. Uh, okay, we're now moving to this whole idea of queries versus reports. And again, Lori, we, anything else popping up that you want to cover right now question-wise? No, we're fine till the end. Okay, and actually at this point, let's go ahead and do that one poll about the general, uh, the general issue of uh, what you're doing with uh, in the reporting system. So, Lori, I think we've got one poll for you. Let's, let's bring that up. All righty. And this is, we want to know all about you, so select all that apply. You can do multiples. Yeah, you can do multiples. Have you built a query? And Chuck wants to know if you built a query by yourself. <laughs> right. Yeah, I'm sorry. No, helping with a tech, it doesn't count. We, we're glad you're doing it, but you need to, uh, you need to be able to have done it yourself. So let's, let's take a look at what you're doing here. Uh, use the help guide to find a reporting area. Use the report search keyword tool. That was what we just yeah we just went through that through that yeah. So, so responses come in. Check all those that apply, and we'll see what <clears throat> what what the folks are saying out there. And we've we've been a little bit off, so we're going to give them an extra five seconds to get voted here. Okay. So we have about seventy five percent of the responses in. Yeah, and if you haven't if you haven't done any, that's okay. You don't. Ha I guess we should have had. I haven't done any of these, but that's okay. Just don't answer any if you haven't done any. So. All righty. All right. Okay. We're going to go Three, ahead. two, Close one. Kaching. Share. So most people. Oh, have we have good. 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 The good. By themselves. Yeah. I'm that's impressed. Good. That's very good. Well, good job, guys. So. All right, so Lori, if you turn the helm back, we'll get back into what we're doing. Okay, queries versus reports. And we sometimes people get confused about this query report, and we want to try to make sure we've got this squared away. A query, and Lori, I edited this a little bit, it determines what data uh, is delivered to your report. Somebody said the idea was it's like of all the elephants in the veldt, how many of them have tusks? Well, you'd have to ask the question, tusk equals yes, that the elephant has a uh, tusk. And so it's really the who and the what is what a query determines. Um, a report template is basically a form. Think of it as it's the output. What is the data, whether we have elephants with tusks, elephants without tusks, what is the data that we're going to have on the page on the template that we'll be looking at. So again, two separate steps. You can have the same report and use many different queries to pick blue elephants, red elephants, green elephants with tusks, with long noses, short noses, and put them in the same output report. And that's the beauty, I think, of the ACEWARE reporting system is that you can have multiple different uh, reports or multiple different queries delivering data to the same template that you really like the way it looks. So again, the idea what the query does, it determines what goes in the box, and the report is what does it look like. All right, we good with that? I'm actually going to give it a five count if there were any questions about the whole report set. I query think the versus report report. 
The questions we usually come up the first time you try to do it by yourself. Yourself. There you go. So again, if you haven't seen it, this is the query screen. Um, you basically have the ability, and again, if you're doing these or the optional additional reports, and again, if you use default report or, well, even quick reports have the option to do additional, uh, but if you use the default report, you won't be seeing the additional, query, the additional report area. I am going to pause a second, Lori, though, and run to the live system and talk about queries because one of the things about running queries is that if you've run Aceware for a long time, you could have lots and lots of queries. You could have multiple screens of queries. One of the tools to help you here is the search, and it even tells us at the top, right mouse click to search the list. So if you right mouse click on the list, it says filter by title or by the query field. Well, if we know that we're looking for a title of a query that has to do with begin date, so we're going to search for a word, B-E-G-I-N. We won't put date because you might type begin date, no space, begin space date, or beginning date. So we're just going to search for the word begin. And now, well, see, this is again. Begins with, there it is, course begin date. So we've been able to find two queries here that have begin date in them that you can find. The other thing when you're looking at queries is that you need to remember, well, you need to know that the name of a query is a human factor. You as a human being name that query you're creating. If you are using the query and you did not create it, I recommend you click on it and then look at the upper right. Now, you'll have to kind of watch up at the upper right of my screen. When I click at it, you'll see it says course begin date to be entered later. So, OK, well, that kind of makes sense. Sometimes you'll have a label, course be number, but it actually, in the description in the right, it'll be equals a specific copy, or it doesn't, it doesn't match up with the label. So I, just a warning especially for programs that have had student manager for a number of years. Lori, any comments on that I want to add, or is that good? Nope, clean out your queries occasionally. Yeah, and kind of look to see uh, uh, who's done what. All right, so that's the query. We're talking about additional reports here. Running and printing a report. And now we're going to kind of move to the actual option screen. This is the normal, an example of a normal option screen. You need to know, and of course remember, these options vary. So in mailing labels, you've got things like print mark labels that you won't see on any other uh, label reports. Uh, you have a sort order option. That's not on all reporting areas, like show wait list, show cancel, record CRM, those are not things that are on every single report area. And Lori has, of course, that reference like canceled records isn't something in the faculty area you're going to see. Um, and I'm going to jump back to live and show you a couple of quick examples of that. So for reports accounting deadbeat, we don't have some options. There's no sort option. For reports daily income by source, there is a sort order option here, and it does include canceled records. You've got a couple report areas, for instance, cash box. Am I too fast, Lori? Are we good? Nope, you're good. OK. Cash box has, file is in use. See, this is going to throw me an error here. Reset the file. My, let's get to statistics, names, demographic summary. The statistical reports, a little bit different screen layout, but again, a lot of the similar ones. So again, uh, the reported examples we're working on here relate to most of the elements are going to look similar to this. OK, so what are the others? Preview to screen. Again, if you're just checking data and you don't need a print a copy of it, you can leave it on the, you can leave the preview. If you are almost always going in and printing a report, 
Uh, in other words, you don't really need to see it. It's a report you run before. It's obviously faster to not check preview to screen. It'll just go directly to the, to the printer. Export to file. Again, if you need to do data exports, this is a way to do that. And again, um, I don't want you to, you know, well, anyway, I have some issues with that with some folks. Anyway, output to file. Print mark labels. Again, for mailing labels, this is a nice feature that allows you to use the label flag. Now, this is in the, over here on the right. You've got a picture of the name screen with the little label flag element. That's where you can mark a student's name and address to get a special label printed for them. And then it'll clear the label flag when the label is printed. So it's like for sending out catalog requests, sending out brochure requests, where you send it out and then you're done. You want to remove the mark. Um, if you're not sure, if you haven't used that, uh, check with your tech. They can explain how that might help you. Uh, the next one, exclude, oh, I guess we skipped over one. No, oh, set label start position, which is underneath. If you're using uh, your Xerox or your Avery format labels, it lets you reuse a label sheet that you might have peeled off part of the labels on. It's a great little tool. Exclude don't mail names. Again, that is if you've got people who have asked not to be mailed or if you've got a bad address on a student record. Record CRM entry. Again, if you have the CRM module, uh, you can log that onto the student CRM log. Show waitlisted, again, whether or not if you're dealing with registrations. We talked about sort order is that some reports have the ability to change it. And now I want to make a note. Just about any report, you can change the sort order. Sometimes it's on the screen. Sometimes you and your tech can do what's called a just do it to change that. But you must make sure your sort order matches the layout of your report so that that is a paired. You must pair the sort to the order of your report. If you're trying to change, you want to group by course name versus course number, or course begin date versus course number. You can do a sort to match it, but you've got to make sure your report layout will match the order of which you, um, you set the report up. So that is a, if you would, some assembly required kind of element. Um, Lori, any buzz popping on? I'm kind of blowing through this pretty fast, and we'll try to come back and go through examples later on. You're doing very well. Thank you. All right. So sort order. Uh, now, here's a couple that I really think people don't use uh, as often as they could. Recycling report area. Uh, and again, what, when you check that, what happens is that when you run the report, you pick a query, you run the report, Rather than returning to the main menu, you stay in the reporting area. And what that lets you do is if you want to run multiple reports in one area, maybe you're in Deadbeat and you want to run three or four of those uh, special report reporting elements, or you want to run Deadbeat and you want to run a special custom report, the recycle report area allows you to return to the area without picking from the menu, reports, deadbeat, accounting, to get there. Uh, I'm going to raise your hand. I'm going to let me get some more involvement going on. Raise your hand. Uh, let me get my attendee list up and make sure everybody's hands are down. I'm going to put down hands. Raise your hand if you have ever run the recycle report area when you're running reports. Some of you seasoned veterans, you should be, all right, we're getting some out there. Good, good, good. Good, good, good. All right. We've got a handful, but a lot of you don't do. Let me show you well, how that works. So if I wanted to run under my favorite report area, Deadbeat, I wanted to run multiple reports. So I'm going to say recycle report area. What that allows me to do is to say I want to run registrations between two dates. So I'm going to say 0101. Uh, 12 through 
202812. We'll see if we get any. Automatically do. We run it, and it tells us, OK, three registrations between those dates. OK, I'm done with the report. I close the door, send it to the printer. And now I'm back to the deadbeat report area. I didn't have to go reports, accounting, deadbeat to pick the report. So now I can run a different report. I can run the same report with a different query. Uh, but that is a way for you to stay in a reporting area without having to always quit, go back, reports. Um, OK, let's cancel. Reports, accounting, deadbeat. And now I'm back to the area. You can stay in here, run these reports all day long, different reports, different queries, and then leave. When you're done, you hit cancel. All right, that is the recycle report area. The next one is recycle query. Now, in my opinion, the recycle query area allows is good when you are really trying to just explore. You want to look at the different report formats in a reporting area without having to rerun a query. And again, I'm going to show you how that works on the live system. So if I'm in, um, let's go to rosters, registrations, rosters, name roster. OK, in the name roster area, there's a default, and there are 15 additional reports. So if I wanted to see what the different reports look like, I click Recycle Query. I pick a particular course that I might want to use as an example, let's say aromatherapy. So now I have, this is the default report. Oh, OK, fine. Maybe I want to see what the other reports look like. So I'm going to say, when you do Recycle, it'll say, use same query to run another user-defined report. Well, sure. So now let's look at what the grade roster looks like. OK. Hmm, this is, come now, oh, this has the ability to put down a grade. Oh, OK, so much for that. Send it to the printer, no. And so you see, I can keep looking at a, let's look at a uh, legal size list, student list legal size. But you get the idea. It allows you to look at all the reports without having to go pick a query and look at those additional reports. Now, I'm going to do one more report that has what I call a just do it on it. So we're now looking at this report, sort by firm. And so it says, here's a roster sorted by firm. It'll show the firm name. And then it'll show the people affiliated with that firm. If you do a lot of business programs, that might be a useful report for your coordinators to kind of see which different companies are sending people to your programs. Now, note when I leave this report. Uh, close the preview, send it to the printer. It says, warning, your last report was modified. You don't recycle unless you know what you're doing. Well, just a note. If you are really just looking for report examples, you know, how does the report look? Is it landscape? Is it portrait? What data is shown on the report? Then you may go ahead and continue and keep on looking for uh, different reports. The, the data in the report might be a little funky, and that's what it's telling you. This may or may not end up the way you want it to look, with the, the data might be eliminated or changed. But you, shil, you still should be able to see how the report format will look, even though it tells you that it was modified by a just do it. All right, any questions about that? Because again, if you're exploring, you're learning the reports, you're wanting to kind of, well, let's see what's out there, that is a great way to do it. Lori, we got anything going on? No, we're very good. All right. We're, we're doing good time-wise, so we should have plenty of time for questions. All right, so where else do we have? The ability to email reports. I'm going to ask another question. OK, everybody's hands down. 
raise your hand if you have ever done the email output file uh, on a report. All right, Joanne, Greg, you don't count. All right, Gloria, good. <laughs> now again, uh, this does require the email module. But the point of this is that you'll have the ability uh, when you do an output of a report to Excel, whoa, come back. When you choose this report output, also output as Excel or a PDF, you have the ability to email that output file automatically using the, the email module to somebody else in your shop, to a faculty member. Uh, if some staff member needs it, uh, you can email them or that, them that report without having to save it as a file and then go into your email program, find the file, find the person, and mail it to them. So again, if you're finding yourself needing to email output reports, Excel or PDF, to staff or to other people, don't forget or get uh, practice. And again, you can practice doing this. There's no harm, no foul. Uh, click on it and um, give it a shot. Okay. Uh, printing options. And again, now I'm going to, this is the new report page menu. And I think I have the old one on the demo here, that when we're running a report and we get to the report, automatically create, we get to the preview. Okay. This is the old report preview. The new report preview, oh, let's see if I can get to this. I've still got an error here, my Chuck area. The new report preview has a little bit different screen layout. And what it allows you to do is to view a one page, a two page, actually four up page report uh, format on your, on your reports. So again, if you're doing a lot of reporting and you've got multiple page reports that you want to kind of preview four panels of the report in one screen, uh, you're able to do that with the new element. And again, that is something, I'm going to show you where to get that. Under the, under the student manager resources area, there is a update file, or there is a um, tools file. Okay, where'd we go? Customers, student manager resources, and at the bottom there is a tools. One of the tools is the new report preview file. And basically you can download that file, just unzip it into your student manager folder, and you'll have the new preview screen. And in questions, I'll show that to people if they haven't seen it yet. Uh, but again, that was part, I believe, the new upgrade will include that. But I think if, depending on when you had your upgrade, you have to add those files to your, to your student manager. Okay, one page report, multiple pages. Again, close the report door option. Uh, ability to print uh, on here where you can have multiple pages. Part of this, again, part of the printing at this page, when you're, when you're looking at the print options, will depend on what kind of printer setup you've got within your shop, because this is basically now your Windows setup. However your student manager Windows network is set up with printers and who gets to use what printers will depend what you see in your print report screen. I think that's right, right, Lori? Yeah. Yep. All right. Now, the last thing I want to make sure you realize, any report in your system can be modified. So again, if you say, well, I don't want the, the phone number on the, re on the report. Not a problem. That's what the modify button is there for. <clears throat> and again, um, we're not going to cover any report modification. It's covered in the inline help. I was impressed. Most of you have done some report modifications, so that's a good deal. Uh, but again, uh, that is something that you certainly can modify reports if you don't like the layout, the format, what's on the report, the size, the font, all of those things can be modified. Um, 
And again, my favorite here is shortcut keys. Uh, and I, a bunch of you use shortcut keys. I'm happy to see that. Wanted to remind you that the F1 key from the name from the student manager screen. Oh, when I close student manager, let's get back to it again. All right, let's see if we can uh, play with webinar. Play with webinar import. I'm going to try another copy. A09. Okay. Ace. Ace. Uh, I'm just going to do it. No. Okay, here we go. So the help key, which is F1, gives you the list of the keyboard shortcuts. And again, what they are are the F2 list, which is the list of classes. The F2 list gives you a quick list of upcoming classes. The F5 key, which is another way to find names. And again, I'm going to ask for a show of hands on this for just the F5 key. How many people have used the blue F5 key? Raise your hand. One. Chuck, we have a poll if you want to do this. Oh, we do. Oh, oh, Lori, yeah, let's, let's, we'll get to that. I'm sorry. Well, we've got a few. Hold that thought, ladies and gents. Uh, Lori, give us the poll. Give us the poll. Okay. All right. I ask about which F key reports do you use? And yep, again, yep. you may check all that apply. I'll check all that apply. And this is, uh, we'll do this in the middle and, and um, show them to you. Sorry, Lori, I forgot about that. No, you're OK. It's just a lot easier than raising hands for each individual <laughs> one. <laughs> for each individual one, yes. Use the force, Luke. OK, let's go, kids. This ought to be quick. Five, four, three, two, one. You done? You done? And Pretty good. Lori's, hey, not too bad. Well, good deal. And I may not give you a whole lot of stuff on it. We do actually have, I think, a webinar in the archive that gives you a bit more detail on this. A couple things I wanted you to note. Uh, there is a new option off of the F2 list, which is relatively new where you can view the room use date, uh, which is kind of cool. And then, of course, the F7, which is your finance people, if you're trying to track information about payments. And then finally, the F9 key, which is the dashboard. I just recommended to this somebody the other day about being able to see real quickly how many registrations you've got coming from the web versus coming from, from all registrations in the system. All right, so, and then finally, don't forget about the WIZ, the Report Wizard. Um, uh, we've, we've given several webinars about that. Um, we think that most of you ought to be able to handle modifying reports inside Student Manager, but if you'd really prefer some extra special options for charts and graphs, and you have a need to do like automatically delivered via email reports, and I should say automatically you can schedule them, the report wizard will let you do that. So again, we've got a, inf go ahead, Lori. No, you're fine. You're good. Yeah, I said we've got notes in the webinar archive about this, uh, or give your tech a call. And again, we'd be happy to give you a, ch a chance to try that out for 90 days and to see if it'll work for you. So I believe, Lori, that that takes us to Whew, questions. Boy, we breeze through that fast, kids. So <laughs> what kind of questions we've got in the mix here? Well, I'm going to ask for questions and tell people this is the time to submit them. But in the meantime, a uh, couple of questions. Um, will the recycle report area work if you're modifying a report? I believe it does. I believe it does. Now, again, with my luck with the demo here, um, but no, I believe that if you're modifying reports in an area, recycle, oh, well, I know it will, yes. So you can modify one report, close it, save it, and then it'll take you right back to this screen. And then you can pick another report or pick another query uh, and modify another report. So yes, absolutely. I, I, I was thinking on recycle query, uh, but I think it'll, it'll work for both of those. And again, give it a try. 
it'll it'll either let you do it or it'll tell you, ah, you know, you can't do that. There's no harm, no foul in giving it a try. Okay. Can you modify transcripts? Absolutely. Is it a report? And the answer is yes. Then it can be modified. So when you're doing when you're doing transcripts. Um, and then, and then, and then I'm getting back to this, cancel, reports, registrations, transcripts, there she be, right there, modify button, you betcha. Okay, I'm not sure I understand this next question, but I'm going to ask and maybe you'll understand it. In the dashboard, is there a way it can give us the income for course codes and not the minimum enrollments? No. Uh, I, well, I, yeah, I know the question, and the idea of what you're saying is, uh, can we get, uh, and I don't have any courses, let me get the dates here, oh, 01, and refresh, that to show the enrollments on here. If you want enrollment, if you want income enrollment numbers by class, uh, let me think about this, whether or not, I don't think F2 does that either. Uh, let's go to you. I, I'm I'm looking up F2 here. There we go. Uh, 2013. I don't think this gives income either. Now you would you would need to run you would need to run one of the class level reports. So it would be courses, um, course details with fees. Income summary will give you a list of the classes with their income, or uh, the income and enrollment summary uh, report would be the good ones for getting class level uh, income uh, when you're looking at classes. And when you're running it, you just run the query for you know courses between two dates, and you could put in uh, you know courses whatever the date range that you'd want to run the report for. All right. And I think, unless anybody else has any questions, that we've answered everybody. Okay. Would anybody raise your hand if you'd like to see that? Um, what was there was one of those I said? Oh, oh, what a modified report screen looks like. Was that the one I was going to say? I, I kind of ran through it. Recycle query. Oh, email a sample report. Anybody want to see the email? Ah, we got a couple people. I knew I'd have somebody. <laughs> to make sure the email module is on this, so at least it attempts to. Yep, it seems to be on there. Aceware.com. So, so if we were to do, if somebody said, "I want an Excel copy of a deadbeat report," so uh, we're going to say, uh, now there's a difference between exporting to file, where we export the data to a file, and this, this is a little more advanced, but there's a difference between exporting the raw data in a report and doing the output, the report format as a, as a file. So if we wanted to do a PDF export of this report, um, I'm going to pick this little button to tell me where to put it. I'm going to put this on my desktop, and I'm going to call it um, Galaxy PDF. And now I'm going to say also email the output file. So we'll run the report. Course number contains, and we're going to do 12F for all of our fall classes. So it's going to give us a report. And there's all the fall classes. Not much going on here, guys. I close the door. Now when I do that, you're going to note in the right. Send it to the printer. I'm going to say no. Watch over to the right. Writing to the report. And now what it does, it takes us to, here's the PDF report we made. Here is the email tool. So I say who I'm going to send this to, lori at aceware.com. Subject is a report, and I might say the darn report you wanted. I'm kind of grumpy now because I want to go play with the grandkids. Your requested report, it automatically, the cool part, it automatically attaches that file. So I could hit the send button, and I'm, I don't think that's the right email tool. 
But I could hit the Send button, and it would automatically send that off to Lori. So again, I'm going to cancel out of it. Do you want to delete the file? And it lets you clean up the file if you really didn't need to keep it for any reason. Um, so anyway, that is the um, automatic email tool. OK, any other questions while I was segueing on that? No. Nope, Let me kind of move ahead, kids, to what else we've got. Other big things, of course, remember the conference. Lori was trying to get you ready for the conference trivia there. We'll be meeting in the world headquarters, Manhattan, Kansas. We'd love to have you come. And our next webinar, again, speaking of the football, what's new in the Student Manager Ace Web Playbook? So we'll introduce you to some new plays, some new routines we've got that we think you'll enjoy for both Manager and Ace Web. And that'll be the 1st of October. So again, for, remember, we're online. Um, look up all the helps. Sign up for your uh, email listings on our website. If you're not on um, the Stay in Touch side, the newsletter, LinkedIn, Facebook, we're there. We'd love to have you join us. So Lori, again, thank you for putting this together. And as always, if you have any other questions, about uh, what we've got going on, you can give us an email, give us a call, Chuck at Aceware, call the Aceware number. We would love to help you out. Anything else, Lori, for the good of the cause? We are four minutes ahead of schedule, Chuck. Wow. Go us. <laughs> <laughs> Way to go. All right, everybody, have a good weekend, and we'll look forward to seeing you in a couple of weeks. Bye-bye, everybody. Bye.